Hello, hello, my lovely, beautiful Virgos. Welcome back to the channel today. We are going to be doing your weekly readings for April 8th through the 21st. Let's pull your cards for these next two weeks here real quick. Hope y'all are doing good. There is some really heavy energy going on for these couple of weeks here. First off, on March 25th, we had a full moon in the sign of Libra. It was also a lunar eclipse. Then we moved on to uh, April 1st. The following Monday, we had a the start of Mercury retrograde. And then, at the very beginning of this week, for you, for your reading, on April 8th, the following Monday from that, we have a new moon in the sign of Aries that is a solar eclipse. So... There is some, hold on real quick. So there is some very heavy chaotic energy going on. Now, these two weeks between the Libra full moon and the Aries new moon on the 8th, where we start our reading, those two weeks from your previous reading that I did for you, Vir Virgo, um, is meant to call into your attention things that need to change or shift within your life. And your uh, beginning energy on the 8th here, this new moon, is meant to be a time of allowing yourself to manifest. Manifesting what you want for your life, what you want for yourself. These two weeks called to your attention the things that need to change or shift within your world. Within your attitude about yourself, towards things around you, things happening. And now, with the intention of this April 8th new moon in the sign of Aries, this is meant to be a time where we set an intention that is meant to come to fruition over these next six months. Because if you were unaware, eclipses happen on about a six-month timeline. It follows the axis, the Aries-Libra axis. So, in about six months during Libra season, we're actually going to see um, some more eclipses occur as well. So, this is meant to talk about, you know, these bigger themes that we manifest within our life over these next six months. So this new moon that's coming up on the 8th, the new moon in the sign of Aries, this is meant to be the kickoff, the starting point for a larger manifestation over these next six months. So we will see some big changes happening. We will see some big things, big themes being brought to your attention, things that are, you know, challenging you at this time. Let's talk about your oracle cards that I pulled real quick. We start off with the seahorse spirit, which says watch and wait. So yeah, watch and wait. Watch and wait and see the changes that are going to be happening for you over these next six months. Then you have the horse spirit, which says freedom is yours. Watching and waiting, waiting for an opportunity or a moment where you can express your freedom. Freedom is yours. It's not something that you're waiting for, Virgo. It's something that is already yours, already for you. And your last oracle card here is the squirrel spirit, which says believe in yourself. Watch and wait. Freedom is yours and believe in yourself. Watch and wait for the perfect opportunity Believe in yourself, believe that you have the ability and the means to see this thing through, that you have the ability and the means to manifest this thing, manifest this freedom in your life, grab hold of it. Let's go ahead and get started with your tarot cards here. We have the death card in reverse starting off on April 8th. And this is, as we said, the Aries full moon. No, Aries, new moon that is happening. My apologies. The Aries new moon, the solar eclipse that's happening on the 8th. The death card in reverse tells me, Virgo, that something is coming to an end, or there is some ending that needs to occur. Now this could be an ending that happens over these next two weeks, but as I said, this is about bigger themes over these next six months. Death is a time of transformation. It's about stepping out of our old life and moving into a new life. You see, death is not this uh, complete ending, but it's actually an opportunity to start anew. We can't go back and change what happened. We can't go back and adjust something that is in the past. We have to accept it and move onward from it. And with the death card being in the reverse, it very well could be an ending happening for you, Virgo, that is something that you 
do not want to happen. You just don't want this ending to occur. Maybe it's something within your life that, you know, you can tell it needs to happen. It's something that's no longer serving you, but maybe in the past this was something that did. Maybe in the past this was something that you really wanted or really uh, enjoyed doing for yourself. And so now seeing it come to an end, being called to end this thing when it was something that you really wanted, well, that's a pretty hard ending to come to terms with. Following the death card in reverse, you have the four of wands in reverse. Now this tells me that it very well could have been some sort of relationship. Uh, you see the four of wands is also associated with like marriage and the home. It's associated with like foundations within our life. And so this very well could be, you know, losing a home or shifting where you're living, losing your home in the sense of like not a, not a foreclosure or something, but like having to move and say goodbye to a home that you really loved. This could also, as we said, being the ending of like a, uh, the ending of a engagement. You know, maybe you found that you were engaged to somebody and you're having to call off an engagement. I don't feel as though this is the ending of like a marriage, but I mean, for some of you, it very well could have been a marriage. This was something that you really wanted and something that you really like built a good portion of your life upon. Uh, the wands are manifestation. So it's something that you wanted to manifest or something that you did manifest for yourself. This isn't something casual that you wanted just to have it for having sake. You wanted it because it was something that you wanted to build your life upon. You know, for some of you, this could even be like a dream job or opportunity that you built up for yourself. Freedom is yours with that horse spirit card, Virgo. So even though this death is occurring, even though things are changing and, you know, it can feel like things are crumbling down around you, especially because your next card here is the tower in reverse, it very well could feel like things are crumbling around you at this time. But really, it's your opportunity to lean into freedom. Uh, being, it, it can feel bad in the moment because we're losing something, but really it's opening our op opportunity to accept something new within our life. You see, if we're holding something within our hands and, and grasping onto it really, really tightly, we can't open up and accept something new to come in for us. We have to be willing to let go so that we can show up empty-handed. And in these empty hands, it's the fullest opportunity to accept anything. You know, there's endless possibilities at this point. You're working outside of the confines of a physical object or singular thing. You open yourself up to being able to accept something entirely new. And that does have a sense of freedom about it, you know, freedom and understanding that there's endless possibilities. Uh, the tower in reverse. The tower is, you know, a card that gets a really bad rap a lot of times in the tarot. Um, actually, I think almost all of my readings so far, or not almost all of them, but a good few of my readings so far for this week have had the tower showing up. I'm not surprised to see it uh, because we are dealing with eclipse energy. We are dealing with things coming to an end, things dying within our life. But it's with the intention of things starting new with starting something new you see the tower is being broken down to its foundations because there was something inherently wrong with it something about the way that the walls were put together something you know maybe the walls had mold maybe there was something structurally unsafe or unsound within this with this building and this figurative building i'm not saying a physical building this figurative building that the tower represents the tower is like the comforts, the things that we put around us in our lives, the things that we build our identity upon, the things that we, you know, expect to always be around us and be there. And when it crumbles, it can feel very uh, uncomfortable or even punishing in a way. But really, it's because there was something unsound. There was something unsafe that needed to be addressed, needed to be broken down so that we can build up something new, something more stable. We learned from this experience of building before, and now we have to take it down and build with our new expertise, in a way. So the Tower card, you know, it gets this bad rap because it can be very uncomfortable, but truly this is a card that is about, you know, taking the opportunity to build again. Your next card here, Virgo, is the Five of Swords, which does signal some sort of conflict. 
So this very well could be an ending brought about by conflict, conflict with people around you, uh, family, friends, loved ones, even coworkers, um, not even people that you have to care about. Honestly, this could even be conflict with strangers that really challenge you on what you want. Uh, with this, you know, all of this ending here, this ending of the, the home, ending of the things that we build our life upon, you know, you can have conflicting emotions about it. And as I said, it's, it can be very upsetting. It can be very uncomfortable to have to go through this change, especially when it was something that you didn't necessarily want to have happen. So you can definitely have conflicting emotion about it. Following the Five of Swords, you have the Princess of Wands. So even though there is this piece of this ending, even though there is this thing happening, this conflict, the Princess of Wands is someone who trusts their ability to build something new. This is someone who still has the creative inspiration to build something new for themselves. As we said a little bit with the Four of Wands, the Wands are about manifestation. So this is a person who is confident in their ability to manifest, their ability to see something done. You know, this is someone who has a vision for the future and the life that they want for themselves, and they trust in their ability to see this thing to fruition. So Virgo, this is you in a way. This is you still trusting that there is magic happening here trusting the divine guidance of the universe that even though things feel chaotic, even though this thing that you manifested that you had was something that you thought you wanted, it's being brought down for a reason. It's being shifted for a reason. And you're being led in a new direction for a reason. And the Princess of Wands, Virgo, is someone who trusts that the universe is guiding them where they need to be. So Virgo, even though it's uncomfortable, even though things are, you know, not happening the way that maybe you expected them to or wanted them to, you still have this inherent trust that things are happening for a reason. Following the Princess of Wands, you have the Six of Pentacles. This card is, sometimes it's about like charity and philanthropy. It's almost, in your case here, Virgo, I feel like it's that peace where someone gives you maybe an encouraging message. Someone gives you uh, maybe a, the tools to be able to navigate this. It's almost as if someone comes in and gives you something that you were looking for or something that you need. So if you are dealing with like, say, a challenging separation, you're having difficulty dealing with these changes that are happening within your life, trying to figure out all these moving parts, but your trust in the universe leads you directly to someone or something that can fill in this gap for you. So your trust, your trust in the universe with this Princess of Wands leads you directly to a moment, to an opportunity where you trust that something is coming in to care for you. This could be, you know, if you're stressed out about finding childcare after a separation, right? This could be someone coming in with the perfect opportunity at your perfect price point. Um, but that's just a quick example. Obviously, that's not going to be for everybody. But this is that little piece, that little uh, bit of generosity that comes through for you in your time of, of need. So, you know, trust the universe and trust that things are going to work out exactly how they're meant to. And finally, your last card for week one here is the Seven of Wands. This is about your convictions. This is about what you believe in, the um, so-called hills that you are willing to die on, right? So understanding that your path, understanding your path and where you're meant to go, even if you have all these obstacles, these endings or things not working out the way that you thought that they would, this is you still trusting your direction. This is you still trusting and not only trusting, but like defending what it is that you believe in, defending your beliefs and your convictions. So, you know, sometimes people are going to be naysayers. Sometimes people are not going to believe in your vision for the things that you want, Virgo. But the Seven of Wands is saying that you have, you're trusting. You're not only trusting the magic of yourself, you're trusting the magic of the universe to provide for you. And you're not going to apologize for it. You're not going to apologize for what you believe in and what you feel. 
let's go ahead and move on to week two here. Starting off week two, you have the King of Swords in reverse. So yes, along any journey, there are moments where we can be, you know, in places of doubt. Moments where we find ourselves struggling with the way to do things. So even though your convictions are in a proper place, even though your faith seems to be pretty strong here, Virgo, the King of Swords in reverse is saying that you still feel this essence of confusion. And part of that could be Mercury retrograde. You know, Virgo is actually ruled by the planet of Mercury. And as I said, April 1st, we have Mercury retrograde happening. It's happening as I'm doing this reading and happening throughout these two weeks here that we have for your reading. So you may actually find yourself feeling very messed up, <laughs> I guess. I don't want to say messed up in the head because that makes it sound like you're like a nutcase, which you're not. Uh, but you may find that things are very difficult, that you struggle to think at this time. You're struggling to think about what you should be doing. The King of Swords is normally a person who's very clear, very clear headed about their thoughts and their ideas. They're able to make a plan and execute the plan. Swords are action. I mean, they're the tools of action. They're the tools of belief. And the King of Swords is normally a person who is very, very clear in their beliefs, very clear in their thoughts. And with this card being in the reverse, you know, you are confused. <laughs> there is so much mind boggling messiness, ickiness that's happening right now. Things that you thought are being challenged at this time, the beliefs that you had, you know, you're, you're standing in your convictions, of course, you know, you're standing for your morals and what you believe in. But it's almost as if you find yourself in a place of like, okay, I have my faith, I have these tools, but I don't have a map. You know, what is this map? What are my next steps to handling this situation, to dealing and, and moving through this process? What do I do next? And the King of Swords in reverse is just this mind mess of stuff, just not working out in your brain, uh, feeling very confused within your thoughts at this time, Virgo. Let's talk about your, actually, you have three cards here. Your next three cards are all pentacle cards. You have the nine of pentacles, followed by the ten of pentacles in reverse, followed by the knight of pentacles in reverse. Um, and I always love to see progressions like this happen within the tarot. I always think it's very interesting because I love progression. It means that you are moving on the right path forward. And it tells me, you know, these processes on this step that you are moving through. Uh, we'll start first, obviously, in order with this Nine of Pentacles here. The Nine of Pentacles is about your independence. This is about your ability to do what you want to do, you know, believing in yourself. Uh, the Nine of Pentacles is not only like financial independence, because of course, pentacles, but it's also uh, just being able to trust yourself, believing in yourself that you have the means and the know-how to do what you want to do. So even if this is the death of a home, you know, the death of trying to figure out like, what do I do if my house is being foreclosed on? What do I do if, you know, I'm ending a engagement or a marriage? Like, what is my next step? What do I do next? But understanding and trusting in your independence. So even though you may not have this support that you had previously, even though you may not have this community of people. I mean, you do have community always, Virgo, but I don't see community showing up for you. I don't see cards of community. This is very much like a solo uh, journey happening for you right now. And the Nine of Pentacles tells me, Virgo, that you trust your independence. You trust your ability to, to do what you need to do, which leads us to the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. So yes, while you may have independence, um, you you still aren't quite in this place that you're trying to get to. You see, the Ten of Pentacles is like this goal, this goal of financial wealth, independence, um, prosperity. It's about not only having enough for yourself, but having enough and then some, you know, enough in extravagance. Like not saying that you're going to be buying extravagant things, but like saying that you'll have more than enough to care for not only yourself, but generations to come. And how, it's it's wealth in excess, wealth of time, you know, an excess of time, an excess of money, an excess of energy and resources available to you at this time. Now, this card is showing up, which means that 
the Ten of Pentacles energy is here, but something is blocking it. Something is blocking this Ten of Pentacles because it is in the it is in the reverse. So this blocking energy could be you in a way, Virgo, um, trusting your independence, but not necessarily seeing how you're going to get to this place. Of course, you know, not seeing how you're going to take these steps in this process to get to this goal that you want. Um, but I feel like it's more than that. I feel like, you know, you have your solo independence. However, there's still this, uh, this piece that you're trying to get to. And as I said, the Ten of Pentacles is here. So the energy is present, but it's blocked. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know, Virgo. It's such an interesting energy to have here. And as I said, it's this, there's this progression, right? You have the Nine of Pentacles of Independence, but the Ten of Pentacles is, it's not just about you. It's about like your community, your world, your life around you. So, um, I don't know, maybe you do have the trust of your independence, but you don't necessarily have the resources currently available, um, such as money. You know, you may not necessarily have the actual money, but you trust in your ability to, I guess, locate this finances. Trusting that the universe will take care of you, even if you don't necessarily have the resources right this moment. You understand the wealth of the universe is always available to you in any way and that you will be cared for no matter what. Even if you don't necessarily have the money right now. I mean, I keep saying money, but it's not just money. Virgo, I sense your immense faith. Like literally, this entire reading, I feel like there's just this sense of immense faith. Even if you don't know what's going to happen next... I just, I sense your faith. I sense that you just trust completely in the universe, even if you don't understand, even if you struggle maybe to accept certain pieces of it, you may not necessarily get it in your mind, but you understand and you trust that the universe is bringing you where you need to be. So I just, I feel your immense faith here. Following the Ten of Pentacles in reverse, you have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. Now the Knight of Pentacles is the doer. This is the person who takes the opportunity that is presented from the Pentacles and they're able to work with it. They're able to bring it to fruition. Um, they are the doer in that they are the person that plants this Pentacle. Uh, they have the willpower to go out there and plant it and see a return from this. I would say the only person that is more uh, abundant than this person is the king of pentacles honestly i mean yeah the queen and king of pentacles are the only other two cards that are above this one so even though you know i feel like you you trust your independence you trust your ability as an individual but you don't necessarily have the resources to you don't necessarily have the resources at this time and the knight of pentacles is someone who is trying to search for, trying to figure out where they're going to take that pentacle and opportunity and where they're going to plant it. I just feel like, like I said, there's immense faith here with you, Virgo. I just, I still feel like there's this, this piece. You're trying to take this. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Watch and wait with that seahorse spirit. I feel like you are, this Knight of Pentacles is almost that watching and waiting energy. Waiting for the right opportunity, waiting for the right moment to actually take this pentacle and plant it somewhere. Waiting for the right opportunity to plant something so that you can receive this return of the Ten of Pentacles. Like I said, there's this immense trust here and waiting for the right opportunity. Maybe some of you are starting to feel discouraged that this will never happen for you or starting to feel discouraged that, you know, uh, it's taking as long as it has, but uh, don't give up the hope yet, Virgo. Your next card is the Hermit in reverse. And Virgo, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm pretty sure the Hermit card is actually the card of Virgo in the Major Arcana, the card that is associated with Virgo. Um, this card is about taking a deep dive. So when, th this is a person on a solo journey. It's a self-imposed isolation to reach enlightenment. Um, this reminds me of, there's like a, 
a story in the Bible of, like, Jesus going out into the desert by himself for 40 days to, to, you know, talk to God and find answers from something. I don't remember exactly. I'm not actually, like, I know I talk about, like, uh, Bible-related stuff sometimes. I'm not, like, actively, like, a Christian person. I was raised within the church, however, um, and a lot of these tarot cards do hold, like, somewhat general associations with Christianity. And so that's just where I'm, uh, that's just where my brain takes me, right? Because that's where my brain has these associations. So I do apologize, you know, anybody of any faith is always welcome here. If I'm using Christian, uh, examples, it's because that's where my, my brain is and my expertise, you know? So not expertise. I'm not an expert. Um, I hope that that makes sense. But I just feel like there's this journey that is, with this in the reverse, it's like this journey needs to happen, or you find yourself on this journey, but you aren't necessarily sure where it's taking you. There's a deep dive. The The hermit is someone who goes on this solo journey to find answers, to seek the truth about something. And, you know, it can be very lonely. As I said in this as I said in this reading, Virgo, this doesn't feel like it's like a, a big community reading. This doesn't feel like a reading that involves a lot of other people. This feels like a very much a solo journey. Dealing with all of this, dealing with this death, this change, this tower of transformation, things changing around you, this is the time where it calls into question, like, who am I? Who do I want to be? I know that I'm trusting the universe. I'm trusting that things are going the way, excuse me. I'm trusting that things are going how they are meant to go. But what does this mean for me? Where will this lead me? Where am I being led? And how is this going to transform me and change me? And in fact, do I even recognize the areas in which this has already shifted or transformed yourself? Shifted and transformed your expectations. The Hermit in Reverse, you know, some of you could very well be resisting this uh, deep dive. Some of you could be hesitant to take a look too far into the part that you played in this. So, you know, obviously I'm not, I'm not saying that like, you know, it was your fault or anything, Virgo, but understanding the pieces that we played in it, understanding the actions that we did, uh, regardless of what happened, you know, we played a certain part for good or for bad towards any situation. Um, some of you could very well be resisting, uh, looking too hard at your actions, looking too hard at yourself. But I feel like it's more just this feeling of being lost, not knowing where you're going, kind of following blindly in faith about where this is taking you, and just being unsure about how this is going to change you in the long run. Your next card here, Virgo, is the Seven of Swords. Now, this card is about, sometimes it's about truth being brought to light. Sometimes it's about uh, lies and deceit occurring around you. I also sometimes feel like this card is a taking back of power of the Five of Swords because this person is someone who is or was a, uh, a victim of this Five of Swords moment, right? And this thing, these swords were taken from them. And they go back and they steal these swords back for themselves. They say, I am not going to be a victim. I am not going to let this sword thing that happen. I'm not going to let this happen unpunished. In fact, I'm going to go back and I'm going to reclaim what is mine rightfully. I don't think it's like an actual physical reclaiming. I don't think this is necessarily like you physically reclaiming an object, Virgo. I think this is more of like you reclaiming your power. Um, even if people are saying things behind your back, even if people are spreading lies or rumors about who you are, I feel like you are choosing to uh, reclaim the narrative for yourself, really. I think that, you know, this thing happened, a victim of circumstance, a victim of things that happened, but Virgo, you are saying, no, I'm not going to let it happen like this. I'm going to write my own story and I'm going to take back my power. I'm going to take back my influence 
about how this happened or the way that this uh, narrative is being written, I'm going to write my own narrative. I'm not going to let other people dictate for me what needs to happen, what should happen, what did happen. You know, this conflict, if this is, I feel like some of you, this does feel kind of like a, like a marital separation or, you know, a separation from your home for some reason. So I feel like that's you, you know, choosing to tell your own story about what really went down, the way that things happened, telling your portion of it, reclaiming your, uh, as we said, reclaiming your narrative, making sure that you are being heard. Your final card here for the reading, Virgo or not your final card overall, because we got like one more, but your final card for the tarot for this week here, Virgo, is the Princess of Swords in reverse. This is for April 21st. The Princess of Swords. This is, this is kind of interesting to me because you actually had, you know, the King of Swords in reverse starting the week off, and then you end the week with the Princess of Swords in reverse. The Princess of Swords is someone who is dreaming or someone who has been dreaming about things the way that they should go the way that they should have gone i feel like this card is saying that it's time to wake up it's time to stop daydreaming virgo uh this card is like it's almost like someone has been stuck in their head telling themselves a story in their mind about how things should have gone um, as we said, that, that narrative, retaking the narrative, but I would make sure, Virgo, that your narrative is actually grounded in reality because the Princess of Swords has this daydreaming quality to it. It's someone who is in their head, in their thoughts about the way that things should go or thoughts about the next step forward. And this is someone who needs to get out of the planning phase. They need to take action. They need to move into the Knight of Pentacles energy and take action because swords are the object of action. And if you see this person, they have a sword, but it's like a bent sword, right? I'm turning it upright just so that you can see it a little bit easier. They have this, this curved sword, but they're not really like in a, in a defensive posture. They're not really in a place of like, swinging their sword to, uh, you know, take action. I mean, the King of Swords here, they have their sword. It's not really an action sword, but it's held up next to them. You know, it's something that's within their influence and their grasp. But this person's almost holding it above themselves. I mean, even their stance is very relaxed. They don't have feet firmly planted. They don't have things, you know, around them. Yeah, it just feels very directionless. It doesn't feel like someone who's actually taking action. It feels like someone who needs to take action. If you have been daydreaming, if you have been in this mindset within your mind, telling a narrative to yourself about something that happened, I feel like there is this need to be truthful. Of course, there's always the need for truth, Virgo. But I just feel like we had that seahorse spirit, watch and wait, you know? Don't get too caught up in daydreaming that you miss your moment. Watch and wait for the right opportunity. Watch and wait for the right moment to move into action. But it definitely does feel like there is a need for action. There is a need for change. Ooh. We are gonna pull one last card here for you, Virgo. I'm actually gonna like shuffle and get like one more because uh, my dogs were barking. Um, we, I'm pulling this card to leave you with an intention of a message from the universe to encourage you and guide you along your path moving forward. This deck is called The Universe Has Your Back. So I really want to just leave you with a positive message about the way that the universe is supporting you right now. We have one card pulled, but I would really like another card. Spirit... Woohoo! Awesome. Okay. All right. Let's read your cards here. You have these two. Your first one that came out was the universe works fast when I'm having fun. Yes. So Virgo, you know, it's, it is a very heavy energy. You know, there is this immense loss, but you have, I just, I feel your immense faith in the universe right now, Virgo. I feel and sense your immense 
belief that no matter what's happening, things are happening for your highest good. Even if you don't know the reason yet, even if you don't know where you're going to be going next, you trust. And the universe works fast when you're having fun. So make sure that you're making time to have fun, to celebrate, even though this energy is heavy. Freedom is yours already with that horse spirit. Freedom is yours. Don't wait for the moment where things are going to be... Uh, don't wait for the moment of freedom. It's already yours and within your grasp. So make sure that you are doing things that facilitate fun for yourself. And so your last card says, In any moment, I can surrender to the powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness. In any moment, I can surrender to the presence, the powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness. Yeah, Virgo, I just feel like you have so much, you have so much trust and faith. At any moment, you can surrender to the powerful presence of love, prayer, contemplation, and stillness. Make sure that you are taking time to meditate. You need to really find time to connect with this deep version of yourself. Even if it's really difficult, even if it's really hard right now, Virgo, you have faith in the universe. You need to have faith in yourself too. You need to believe in yourself with that squirrel spirit. Believe in yourself, Virgo, because you do have what it takes to do this. You have immense faith, and that's going to take you way further than your own actions, than your own abilities. You know, trusting in the universe. The universe can do a lot more when we step out of the way. When we stop putting our influence through it and we allow the universe to work through us, things happen really fast. So anyway, Virgo, that is where I'm going to leave your reading for these next two weeks. I hope that this was able to help guide you and provide you some guidance in some way. Uh, once again, thank you for being here, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week.